Yeah, but, I'm, uh, but it'll be, it's, it's, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be in the car. So we'll, but we're still there. Much, I was also the same time. Probably whatever, whatever, whatever time we're gonna live. Um, I'm not sure, probably, no, but whatever, whatever Akiva tells me. Whatever Akiva tells me. Okay, so let's see what it says. So yesterday we had three cases that seem to have indicated that if you think you're watching wine for for Toma, you end up watching, it ends up you were watching oil. The Gemara had a have a minute that that in and of itself is a problem. But the Gemara proved from a brisa that that's not a problem because Gemara actually had a brisa where you were watching a barrel and you thought it was wine and it really it was oil. And the Gemara says, the Brice says it's still Tahar. So because of that, the three cases where Gemara told us about huge humors need to be explained, each one individually as to why we say they're Tomei. So the first case was when Paul passed the shawl to Saul, right? That was the first case. Um, the second case was when two women swapped their clothing. They didn't realize, um, and they each put on each other's clothing by mistake. And the third case was that someone was planning to put on Big Day Chayel, and he put on Big Day Shabbos, according to Rashi, or according to the Tzayis Rid, he put on Big Day Chayel when he was trying to put on Big Day Shabbos. So let's see how the Gemara explains them. We'll just review that last tickle, and then we'll go back. So it's like, when Rivka and Rachel are both wearing each other's clothing. So Rivka says, my clothing that Rachel is wearing, I don't know if Rachel is watching it properly. Since I don't know if Rachel is watching my clothing properly, even though I'm looking at her, I myself am a Siach Das from the clothing that belonged to me that she's wearing. And because of that, Umas Chadai And we had a difficulty in understanding why would that be a problem? At the end of the day, both of them, both Rivka and Rachel, were Aishas Chavris. In other words, they were both careful to make sure that no Tumah came to it. So just because Rivka gave up on their own baguette because she didn't know that Rachel was going to be watching it, but the fact is Rachel was watching it the whole time. So if Rachel was watching it the whole time, there was never a point where that baguette was neglected. Just because Rivka gave up on her own baguette thinking that it was neglected, but in fact it wasn't because Rachel was watching it the whole time. So why is it Tame? So that's what Rabbi Yosef Engel commented on. And Rabbi Yosef Engel said, you see that Hesach Adas must be a soul in and of itself, even when there's no chance that the object became Tuma during that lapse. So in this case, Rivka thought Rachel wasn't watching her begging. Because of that, Rivka stopped thinking about her begging. So even though it surely didn't become Tomei, because we know Rachel was watching it the whole time, the, Has the Hesach Adas of Rivka is a psul in and of itself to make her beg Tomei. That was the first case. The next case that we have to explain why it's Tomei is Rabbi Yonison ben Amram Nami. He was talking about a case where you put on what you thought was big day Shabbos, and it was really big day Chal, or, or vice versa, depending on if you look at Rashi, or we like to touch for survey. So once again, even the Kalim the Shabbos, Ovid Lahu Shimer Tvei. So according to the Toys of Sarid, it's, it's, very, it's very simple. I wanted to put on Big Day Shabbos, and I found that I was wearing Big Day Chayel. So at that point, I felt bad for a second. Oh, yeah, I wanted to wear Big Day Shabbos, and I put on Big Day Chayel. That moment of confusion creates a Hesachadas, Masach Daite Minayu. That's how the Toys of Sarid learns. But the way Rashi learns, you can't say that, because in, in Rashi's case, what happened was, is you put on Big Day Shabbos. You just thought it was Big Day Choyl. So the question is, if I put on Big Day Shabbos, thinking that it was Big Day Choyl, why would that be a problem? Maybe you'll also feel bad because now you're ruining the Big Day Shabbos. Why are you ruining it? It's not that you're ruining it. It's like a dirty, you, you know, there's, there's, you can have the same test of Adas also mm -hmm. because of Shabbos. Meaning, Shabbos is involved. I hear, I hear. So, so, so what, what, uh, what Rabbi Yosef Engel says is that if you're, if you're watching something, there's, there's a different level of Shmira that you would have for a big day Shabbos because it's a higher level of pollution than big day Chol. 
Now, even though practically speaking, all you need to do is make sure that it doesn't get touched by a tumma. But Big Day Shabbos has a higher level. And since you didn't maintain that higher level of Kedusha, it doesn't work. Even though, even though in fact, even though in fact you had the Kavana of Big Day Chayel. And okay. yes. All right, just going back to the first case of the CF class, like even if she didn't switch, who's worth thinking about their clothes the entire time? Like, like, like somebody I, who is mocked with on, on Tum of a Tire. They're thinking about it the entire there's, time. There's, like also, not there's, there's also years about people who are particularly focused on making sure that nothing becomes that hard to believe. And that's exactly why, that's exactly why Rabbi Shemal pointed out that it needs to be believed by Lashomer. In order to assume something is retained, it's the higher up, someone has to constantly focus and make a positive effort to watch and be vigilant at all times. Okay. And in the times of the Beisim Mikdash, where the people ate Kachim and people ate Kruma, people were vigilant. To us, it's so, it's so foreign, but that's how people lived in those days. That's how people lived in those days. So let's see what the Gemara says. <laughs> Kept it a little bit after the base of the I wonder what the difference is between now and after the base of the As long as there are trumas, as long as there are trumas, are still relevant. And even though Kutcher wasn't relevant, the trumas were relevant. And why isn't it relevant today? Because nowadays, nowadays we're all Tumay and Asim, we're all the Parduma. So, and in those days they were? They had a Parduma? Maybe they still have it. I mean, then what about right after the base of the uh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay, so let's see what the Gemara says over here. So we have this case where, where someone put on the Godim, thought it was Big Day Choyl, and it was really Big Day Shabbos. And since he only watched it with the level of focus for Big Day Choyl and not Big Day Shabbos, it doesn't even retain its status of Tahira for Big Day Choyl. It's nothing at all. And Rabbi Yosef Engel points out that you find this concept throughout the Torah. And he points out, uh, he, there's a Meshach Chachma that talks about it. And the, the Meshach Chachma talks about why is it that Kedusha Rishayna was Kitsha Lashaita and not Lasa Bobo. So the first base of Mikdash, after we went into Golas Bobo, Eric Yisrael lost his Kedusha. While the second time we came, when we came up from Bobo after Golas Bobo, and we were Makadish Eric Yisrael once again, that Kedusha remains forever. Yet, if you look at the strength of the Kedusha, it seems counterintuitive. Because when we first went into Eretz with Yeshua, we came with a strong, powerful arm. We took over. We, it was a full conquest. The, the Yarden split, the walls of Yerichai fell. Kleisrock really took over. But when they came back, they came with their, they came with their heads, with their, with their heads, with their heads down. And, and they didn't come with strength. The Goyim let them build the base of Mikdash. Yet that lasted much longer. So the Meshach himself says, that's, that's exactly what it is. Since when they came they came the first time, they came on such a high level. That was a very high level, but it was also much more fragile and needed much more to protect it. And that's why it didn't survive. When they when you come on a lower level, it needs less it needs less protection. And the Meshachach Mushtel Tzu Halacha, that a Bas Koyin, who is Mizana, she can no longer eat Trumas and Maishras. But a Bas Levi, who's Mizana, is still allowed to eat Maishras. So the question is, why would a Bas Koyin who's Mizana be worse than the Bas Levi who was Mizana? And the answer is very simple, because when you're dealing with a higher level of Kedusha, <coughs> it's more fragile, and, and if, if, if it's violated, it doesn't just default down to the level below it, it's as if it wasn't there at all. I mean, you'll see the flip, side to, the flip side to that, I was just reading the Parsha, the reason why the first and second base mixture was destroyed because it was built by, by Goyim. But the, the reason why the Mishkan wasn't because it was built by uh, by the name is from. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What's that? Right. I hear. So so in other words, in other words, a volunteer army is going to uh, win over a, over a conscripted army. That's right. Okay, Ella. We have Yodis and Menelazer. The Yodis and Menelazer's case was where. Paul passed the shawl to Saul, right? So Nabat Lahu, Shimur, the Yadid Khavri. Saul was looking at his shawl the whole time, even while Paul is passing it to him. So why is there a problem? 
Saul is, is not focused on it because it's in Paul's hand. Paul is not focused on it because Paul is saying, Saul asked me to pass him in Shaul, and he didn't even know if I was tar or not. He didn't even ask me. So obviously he doesn't care. So if he doesn't care, why would I make sure that it's tar? So Frank the Gemara of Eloi, is that so? That when something's in someone else's hands, automatically there's no shmira on it, and therefore you have to assume that it's tame. But Tanya, we learned a case as follows. Someone who was a wealthy wine merchant, and he had sent with his shipping department, he sent barrels of wine to be delivered to another city. <laughs> his, he had a whole shipment of wine sitting in jugs that he sent with his, with his shipping department to another city. And he's not right there with the caravan. He's coming behind. But he's sort of with them, but he's not right with them. So he doesn't, he doesn't have his eyes on it all the time. Even though he's way behind them and he can't even see the wine, we still say that that wine remains tar. And Rashi says in the third line, we're not afraid that they were tummy. He didn't tell them that he's not going to be with them. So therefore, at any given moment, they're afraid that he could walk in on them. And therefore, they're going to be careful not to um, be lax in the shmira of the uh, of the tahir of this wine. Alma, but whatever the case is, you do see that you see that even though the wine merchant is not there, he's given over the wine to a third party. Nevertheless, it remains tar. So the whole premise that you could only watch something when it's right there in your hands is is refuted from here. I'm sorry? That's a very good question. No, they're not sealed. If they were sealed, then there's no chashash whatsoever, no matter what. So that's a very good point. And if he told his crew, you go, in other words, he told them, I'm not going to be trailing you. So now they're not concerned that he's going to pop in at any second. Then, Rashi ignores this next line. Because Maish narration, Maish Sefer, we have a difference in Lach between Rashi and the Sefer. That's not relevant to what we're trying to do here. All we're trying to do is prove from the first case of the Brisa, where Tahirais of Tahirais, that in fact you don't have to be watching it the whole time. It could be in the hands of a third party. If you are Gorish, Rashi says, Rashi says, yeah, the, what's in the Rashi and Sefer? Primarily, how is it that in the Rashi is Tahirais of Tahirais? I'm sorry. I don't understand the how many of the questions. It's obvious what the difference is. No? What is the, the difference between, between what? The ratio and the sinkhole. Huh? We're going to soon see that it's not so obvious. So if we're going to soon see that it's not so obvious. Um, the reason why it was so obvious is because I, spill, I spelled out oh, the Moscona okay. Gemara, but it's not so obvious. So let's, let's see how the Gemara unfolds. You know why I don't need to have my eyes on it? It's because it's literally like I put it into a sealed truck and put a, a seal on it that if it's broken, uh, it, it, the cop has to stand there for four hours until the guy from the min comes, as in Chaim Tzvi's story from yesterday. But it's a sealed situation that cannot become Tama. You know why? Because I took all of my employees, and I made them go to the mikveh and be matire themselves before they were shipping. So I didn't have to worry about them touching or anything, because that whole situation is like something in a sealed box, because there's no opportunity for it to become tame, because I made all my workers be matire themselves. It gives you a new understanding of the shipping company pure or later, right? They all have to go to the mikveh before they do their job. Suck to Gemara, if that's the case, <coughs> So Seifa Nami, in the Seifa as well, if there's no opportunity for it to become Tommy, because all of the workers in the shipping department there, all the people there in that vehicle is are, are Tahar, so what's the issue? So after Gemara, Ein Hama Oritz, Makbid Al-Maga Sure, all of these people handling the goods are Tahar, but what if they stop in that arrest area and they meet their buddy? So their buddy might not be Tahar, and they're going to let their buddy put his hands 
on the product, and then it could become tummy. Frank the Gemara, Ihachi Reisha Nami. So now there's no protection in the Reisha either. There's no way they'll let anybody get close to their goods. They'll keep that truck sealed. Why? Because if their boss pops in on them and catches them red-handed with the truck unsealed, they're all going to get fired. So therefore, there's no concern. Frank the Gemara, so then why is there a concern in the Seifa? Yachi Seifa Nami. Why, why would there be a concern? Are they not afraid that their boss will pop in on them at any time? Since he told them, you go, I trust you, no need to be concerned. I'll already come later. So that puts them at ease. Even though technically he could still pop in on them, but once he says that to them, they are no longer concerned that he's going to pop in on them, and therefore they might let somebody else touch them. And that's why in the safe words tummy. But really, but really, Zakta Gemara, really, if something's in the hands of your friend, you cannot watch it and it will be tummy. Here, the reason why there was no concern is because all of the players here are all tahar. The only problem, only concern is, is that a third party will come as long as we eliminate that op, that, that, that possibility, such as with fear of you popping in on them, there won't be a problem. Okay, Zakta, so we finished the paragraph, Jim. And now we can start the next and final pair of Chagiga. We're coming into the final week of Chagiga before we get into, before we switch gears and we change into Yavamas. So let's see the Helega Mishnah. Once again, we're going off on a tangent, um, learning about Tumav at the <coughs> because of one halacha that's going to be relevant to Yom Tov. Every time I go to the Kalim Mikvah and I look down, I see someone drop the knife, someone drop the fork there, and he can't get it out. So because of that, when you toivel, we use a basket. But what if you didn't have a basket? You would take a big pot and maybe you would put your forks into the big pot and then you would bring the pot under the water. So it's a very routine, logical, rational way to toivel to make sure that you don't drop small items. So, if you're being retired, Kalim, for you to use those for Truma, you can do that. You cannot put a whole bunch of forks into a pot and lower them into the mikveh. It will not work if you want to use those forks for Kaidish. Again, this is a Chumri Yaseira. Now, this doesn't mean if it's very, very heavy, because if you look up the Shulchan Aruch, if, if, the Shulchan Aruch also said that you're not allowed to do this even for Chulun. But the Shulchan Aruch is speaking in the case where it's very heavy where the keli on this is very heavy, so it's pressing hard against the, the pot. You might have a very heavy vessel that you have inside a pot, it presses down hard, that's where it might actually be a chatzitza. Here we're talking about light kalim, where there isn't really a concern of chatzitza. When it comes to kalim, Rashi says, Kli, there are certain kalim, imagine a becher that has a base on it. So you can use the place where you normally fill it with wine, but you can turn the becher upside down and you could fill the base, which is hollow, with wine as well. I believe the base is like a handle. Um, I think base is a handle. Does the archbishop say what base is? Tzvita place. Oh, so he doesn't translate what it means? No. It says it will what define it. Handle the rim? Hang on for two more days. I'm a Okay, so we'll see. And that okay. can also be filled with wine? It, it, it could be a keli for itself, that's right. So called tashmish, mitashmish aboy, every individual receptacle within this keli, choshev kli bifne atzmoy, is considered an independent kli. And that's a kula, lenin chuma. Shem nit mazeh, lenit mazeh. If the kois got tame, maybe the base wouldn't be. If the kois got tame, the base at svita wouldn't be. Of course, if a sheret touches it, it's all tummy. We're talking about the Tumas Terabonim. By Tumas Terabonim, they didn't enact the Tumas Terabonim to be exactly like Tumas Teraisa. They actually said that the Tumas Terabonim would only in, impact part of the Kali. By Kaidish, if any part became tummy with the Tumas Terabonim, the entire Kali is tummy. Next, if someone holds a medrus, so what is a medrash? Rashi says, minel sholza. Medrash is something that became tummy because it was stepped on, because the weight of the tummy person was placed on it. So a nida or a zav, 
their shoe is something that they stepped on, is tummy and it's an avatum. So the Allah is, if you're holding in your right hand an avatum, an, an, an avatum, in your other hand, you can hold truma. The problem is, if you touch it, if you touch it while you're an avatum, you're making a tummy. So Rashi says, you're not just carrying truma, it's bechavis she'enin avira. It's in, a, it's in a sealed klecheris. So you're not actually physically touching the truma. So if even though you're, you're tummy, because if you touch a medish, you're going to be a uh, rishon latoma, and you have an avatum in your hand, and could be while you're holding on to it, you would make something that you touch into an av itself. But since it's in a klecheris, your negia doesn't work for it. And according to Rashi, you can hold both in one hand. Yeah, you can even hold both in one hand as well. That's right. Avaloy is a kodesh, but you wouldn't be able to do this if if you need to keep this tahar for the purposes of kodesh. So if it's kodesh meat, you wouldn't be able to do that. Okay, that's another chum. Another chum. Big day oichle truma. Someone who is with mitahar himself to eat truma medrash la kodesh. His begadim would be tame tumas medrash for somebody who wants to eat kodesh, which is what we saw in the last mishnah. The halachas of Kaddish are more stringent than the halachas of Truma. What if you have a beged, a moist beged, it's damp and it's tied in a knot? So I envision you have a t shirt and the t shirt got wet and it's actually tied in a knot as well. So if you want to toggle it, first of all, you have to untie the knot because that knot is a stick of chatzitza. You have to dry the keli up. The the uh, the uh, <coughs> the uh, sh- shirt this teacher would have to be left to dry. Rashi says the chalzem yishem the dami lechatitza who if it's wet maybe the water is a chatitza but it's a chomer yisera umatno and then after it's unknotted and it's dry then you could tie it to be matayr the achgach kosher and then you could tie it back up if you want uva truma but when you're tying something for truma kosher rechach matno there's no concern even if it's wet tied in a knot you can tie it as is. We know that a keli is not makabal tuma until until its final process. So Toysus tells us that people during the production of keli were not makbi to keep it to her. But at the final stage, where it's going to become a keli, and then it'll be susceptible to tuma, that's when they really put their guards up to be very careful to make sure these keli would not become tummy. So if you had a keli that was finished and we know it was to her, Nevertheless, you still have to table it if you want to use it for Kaidish. And Rashi says the Gemara will explain why. For Truma, if it was finished and it's cut and it's tar, there's no need to table it. It's already tar. What happens if you have a pot and there's four pieces of meat in the pot and, and the pot becomes tame, something touches the pot, a shares touches the pot, or a sheretz touched one of the pieces of the meat in the pot. So for Kaidish, we look at it like all the pieces of meat in that pot touch that sheretz. So the whole pot becomes, let's say, a regional tumor. Of a little truma. For truma, you look at each piece individually, just because they're in a pot that doesn't make them into one piece of meat. So if a sheretz touched a piece of meat, it would become a reshine. The, the piece of meat adjacent to that would become a shiny because it would get its tumor from the first piece of meat. <coughs> We're not talking about a klitheris. That's metama me'avira. It's just because it's in one place together. Correct. It only became tome because, because the tuma touched one of the pieces of meat. Before Kodesh, we look at everything like it's one big piece of meat. If they're touching each other, if they're touching each other, then, then we look at it like the tuma got transmitted from the first to the second with a degradation. So if the first became a Rishon, the second will be a Shani, the third will be a Shlish. Okay. If, if it's all one piece of meat, then the whole piece of meat becomes Tomei the same way. Correct. You don't cut away that area, so to speak. Yeah. Okay, Zohar to Gemara. Haravi Bakaydish Pasul. This we discussed that by, by, by Kachim, even after Ravi Pasul's it, but Vashlishi Bichuma. By Truma, Shlishi is the end of the line. Again, he used the word Pasul because since it's Tomei, but it cannot be Metame anything else, we refer to it as possible. If one of your hands became tummy, again, this is also only a tumma de rabbanon, 
Chaver to Tyre. So if your one of your hands become Tomei with a Tumad Rabbanon, you could still use your other hand to touch Truma. Uva Kaidish Mat will stand. But by Kaidish, if one of your hands becomes Tomei Tumad Rabbanon, you have to toivel both hands. Shayad Metama is Chaver to Bakaidish of Aloy Betruma. We, we say that automatically, if one hand becomes Tomei, the other hand becomes Tomei, that's for Kaidish, not for Truma. Now we have another difference. Oichlin, Oichlim Nugubin, if you have Oichlin that are dry, and meaning they never were Hoksha Lakabal Tumma. So if you have a, a grape, and this grape was never Hoksha Lakabal Tumma, so it cannot become Tumma, right? You're allowed to eat that, you're a diamond to apples. So if you have hands that are Tumma, so you have hands, let's say, that are Shani the Tumma, you're allowed to eat a dry grape, because even though you're touching it, you're not making it Tumma, because it wasn't Hoksha Lakabal Tumma. The Tumma. Avaloi bekoidish, bekoidish, you wouldn't be able to. And again, the Gemara is going to explain what the chashash is. Ha'aynin, someone Rachman al-Atzlan who lost a loved one that day, u'mechosha kippurim, so the oinin Rashi says, is even someone who didn't become Tomei. So he happens to be an oinin, but he's not Tomei. Or mechosha kippurim, which is any one of the Azov, uh, your lettuce, anybody who has to, who after the table, they actually have to, they have to bring a carbon before they mutter, he'd catch him. Trichin tefila l'koidish. Even after they bring their carbon, they have to go to the mikvah again in order to eat kachim. Avaloy truma for truma the 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 tefillah they did the day before because normally they do tefillah they have harav shemesh and then the next morning they bring the karbanas. <coughs> right after they bring the karbanas, they can eat the truma, but they cannot eat kachim until after they go to the mikvah again after the uh, after the carbon is brought. So zok to gemara, zok the gemara. Bakhoidish, my time alone. Why can't you toivel one keli inside another keli for Khoidish? Um Rabila, Rabila said that they should shall clean khoitis. The width, the, the weight of the keli resting on the floor of the pot, right? You have one pot inside another pot, the weight of the upper pot creates a khatsitsa. Again, this is a khumri sayer because we're not speaking about something that's particularly heavy. Maybe there, maybe when you know two pots get put in one inside another one. It's not going to become very tight. Well, we're not talking about like a babushka doll. We're talking about just something sitting on the floor of the pot. And it's bedavka where it's not. Because if it is tight, even for chulun, there's a problem. There's a shulchan aruch pasta that's a problem. So we're talking about something that's not particularly problematic. In fact, if this, if the chiddush here is that there's more stringent halachas of chatzitza for kachim than there are for truma, well, then the Mishnah has another case that says exactly the same thing. So why would the Mishnah be redundant? Since the case in the Sefer, which we're soon going to identify, is also all about Chatzitza, then it would be counterintuitive to say that the Rish is talking about the same thing. By Kodesh, if you have a wet t-shirt that's tied up in a knot, you have to untie the knot and dry it out. That's also because of a Chumar of Chatzitza. And then after the Torah, you could do anything you want with it. But with Truma, Koshir, Achach, Matel. So are you going to say that they're both telling you a halach of Chatzitza? It's redundant. Reisha is safe and Mishim Chatzitza. Dr. Mar, no. Reisha is safe are both Alt Chatzitza. So why do I need the Mishnah to give me two examples to show that there's a Chumra by Kodesh regarding Chatzitza? With Tricha. The Ashmin and Reisha, if we only knew the case about the pot, have a mean, I would have thought, high new time up. The Lakodesh Loi. The reason why by Kodesh you're not allowed to table that way, we should kvede shall kli the ika, because there's the weight of the upper kli against the bottom kli that's that's uh, creating a chatzitza. Avol seifa, the lack of kvede shall kli. There's no weight there; it's a knot, but there's not a heavy keli. It's a different type of chatzitza. Maybe that's not a problem. Maybe that's not something that we need to worry about. Ema le Kodesh nami lo have a chatzitza. So that's why the Mishnah needs to illustrate the Chaymer of Chatzitza even with a knotted beggar. V'yash and Seifa. But if we only had the Seifa of the case of a knotted beggar, and that's a Chatzitza, have a mina hainu tamid l'chaydish loi, mishum de kitra v'maya ahaduki mahadik. I believe those are those who take out the word water, the maya. But whatever it is, a knot is tighter than the pressure that the weight of a keli would put on the bottom. Avoresha, the maya akfuya makfale, where the water is 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 surrounding the keli, and Rashi speaks out. Matzifo is a magbiyos. Do you water is actually going to raise 
the keli, it's going to reduce its weight. So that maybe would not be a problem for Tzitzah, because a kriya makfile lemana, lo have a chitzah, tricha. So in fact, they're both telling you a chiddush in chitzah, but there's small nuances in between them that the Tana felt necessary to point out. Zohar to Gemara, Rab Ila Latame, Rab Ila, who is the author of this Gemara so far, who's telling us that the reason why he can't put one pot into another pot is because of chitzitza. He is sticking to his svara because he made another comment that's consistent with what this with what he said over here that it's chitzitza. There's 10 miles. The first five apply. It applies to the that you're also doing with the Chumr of Kodesh. And the last five are the Kodesh of a loy lechulun shenasu al Kodesh. My time. What's the Svar? Why? The first even apply the Chulun Shinas al Tarasa Kodesh and not the second five. So tomorrow, Chomish Kamaisa, the Islu Durara, the Tumma, Midaraisa, they have some minute connection to real Tumma, Gozru Burabanon, Bain Lakodesh, Bain Lakhulun Shinas al Tarasa Kodesh. But Vasraisa, the second five, the last Durara, the Tumma Midaraisa, they don't even have a connection to Tama Chumar Balma, therefore, Gozru Burabanon, the Kodesh. But Lachulun Shinasu Al Tarash Akodesh, Loy Gozru Rabban. So this was a big mouthful, and we need to get um, Rashi to help us understand what's going on. So, first of all, we said Rab Ela, who said that it was Al Tchatzitza, is Latime, who said there's only 10 miles in the Mishnah. Elu Shabain Chumal Akodesh, Banan Yud Alf Tanabe. If you actually count up in the Mishnah, you're going to find 11 items mentioned in the Mishnah. So, why did he say there's 10 if there's only 11? It's because Allahani Tarti, the Khataima, Kashalukhada. Since there's two items in the Mishnah that are both related to Khatsitsa, Rab Ayla counted as ten because it's really only ten, because both both of the Khatsitsa items he counts as one. So that's why it's Latame, his count that the Mishnah has ten items is consistent with the fact that he holds that there's two items that are merely a Khumra of Khatsitsa. Okay. Now we said that the ones that are even, even a chomer for chulun shenas al tarish are those that have a smidget of deraisa here. So let's see how Rashi this explains this. Drawer the tumah deraisa, chashash tumah deraisa. There's a chashash of a tumah deraisa, and Rashi goes through them. The first case was kli besoich kli. Ika chatzitza, sure it's a big chomer to say there's a chatzitza, but if there is a chatzitza, tumah deraisa. The keli was tumah mi deraisa. The second case, achirayim v'toich. Af al gab the beklish and itmu achoyer the mashkin the tumah derabanan the askinon. Even though we're only talking about a tumah derabanan, and that's why there's a difference between the different components of the keli. Miu how the amar derabanan mashkin metam and kli mishum gezera the mashke zav zavahu. The reason why they said that any mashke is metam and kli is because we're geyser if saliva if a mashke that comes out of a zava or a zava which is an avatoma going roika like a saliva maybe rather than the urine. That would be a deraisa. Over tumah deraisa and chiluk bechlishet of ben acharayim otoycha. But by a tumah deraisa, we don't split up the keli into its individual components. She bechamokim she tumah nagas boy nut makuloi. By a tumah deraisa, it's all tummy. So the fact that by kodesh, Chazal is saying that it's all tummy, it also has some connection to the deraisa. Noises and medrus, someone who's carrying the shoe of a zov, nami. Chashash tumah deraisi. There's also some connection to deraisa. He did mafarish begemor, like the more is going to explain. Maisa haya shenafal retus a sandal with the aver chavis. What happened was is the, the sandal, which was an avatuma, its strap fell in to the airspace of a barrel that he was holding, and it actually made a tumah. So there's a connection here to tumah deraisi. Big day oichle tuma medrus lekodesh. Again, shema yoshva alein ishtenida. Maybe his wife, who was anita, sat on the caleb. I sat on the bucket. Again, it's a chashash tumah de rice. On Caleb and the Gvarim Batayra, Mishnah Tzadok Amor. So let's go back into the Mishnah and look at the other cases. So we actually list off all of the cases that actually have a shaykhist to tumah de rice. But let's look at the things that don't have a shaykhist to tumah de rice. Um, Revi B'Kodesh Posel does not have a shaykhist to tumah de rice because it's a new fabricated tumah that does not exist. Um, 
Nitnas Achs for Yodav Chayvach and Tahir, again, these are two that don't exist. So therefore, they apply um, only to real Kachim, not to Chulun Shinasu of Tarsifates. Rav Omar, Rav says, Me to Seifa Havat Mishum Chatzitza, Reisha Lab Mishum Chatzitza. Rav disagrees with Ula. And he says the reason why you cannot toggle one keli in another keli has nothing to do with the problem of chatzitza. It's a completely different problem. You know why you're not allowed to toggle one keli inside another keli? It's gzeri shalayat bil machtin v'tzinerios v'chlish ein depiv kishvay feris hanoi. If you have a bottle with a narrow opening, like a soda bottle, right? The opening is very small. That opening is not big enough to say that what's in the bottle is communicating with the mikveh. So you can't put a big keli into a soda bottle, but you can put a needle, you can put small things into that soda bottle, the toivo. And if it has a very small opening, the needle inside that bottle will not become tar because it's not a big enough of an opening to connect the water that's in the mikveh with the water that's in the bottle. So because of that, we said, don't ever toivo anything inside another keli, no matter how big the opening is, because once we allow that, you might come to make a mistake and even tell about something in a bottle that has a small mouth to it. And that's a chumrah only for culture. Yeah. Small, small bottle with yoke, yoke parts like a separate um, uh, entity from the mikvah. It is. So, so then it doesn't have 40 signs. That's right. That's why it doesn't work. That's exactly why it doesn't work. It could only work if you consider it connected to the mikvah of 40 so, so. so if you put the bottle in first and, and um, filled it with, with mikvah water, kept it, uh, uh, kept it under the water, would it be then considered as part of the mikvah? I don't think so, no. That water inside would not be no. considered the, the only exception that Toysus mentions is that if the bottle was also tummy and you were toiling the bottle as well, the Gemara says, since the bottle becomes tar, whatever's inside it becomes tar as well. But otherwise not. So you could end up, in essence, subtracting from the mikvah and make the mikvah invalid by putting that bottle. I, I, that, that's already another step. I don't know if that's true, but it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting point. Yeah, if you add exactly. Yeah, and um, the reason why I'm not so sure about that is because this sheer of Shishfer Hanoi is a big child of how it works. So, for instance, if I have a mikvah of 40 saw and I have another body of water that's not 40 saw and I want to connect them, there's a question if I need a shesver shanoid or maybe a little bit less. So there's a lot of there's a lot of toy about that. Um, there's even a shaila. If you want to connect the mikvah, you have to have a whole shesver shanoid, but does water have to go through it? Could that hole be above the water level? There's a sheet in the Rishonim will hold that hole could even be above the water level. So it's it's connecting to mikvahs without even water going through. There's a lot of there's a lot of uh, uh, shaila of this of this Indian. So zok to gemara. Gzeir shemiyatul machtin v'tzinoyus v'chlishei v'papiv kishesferes hanoi. Kedet tanya like we learned. Ear of mikvahs kishesferes hanoi. Rashi says if you have a mikvah chaser that's not mikvah shalom, you have a mikvah with forty saw, and you have a mikvah right beside that's not forty saw. But siner be neim hamachabrim, and there's a pipe in between them that connects them. You need to have kishvei shveres anoit, which is like a straw. It's a, it, it, in the post it's anywhere between about one and a half inches and three inches. It has to be like the thickness and like the and like the uh, opening. You have to be able to put two fingers in the hole and turn them around. It shouldn't be so tight that you can't spin them around. So that's how big it would have to be. Sovereign law, kaha, rubber would hold. That you'd aleph milus shanukam. Now that the first case has nothing to do with chatitza, it's a whole different thing. So in fact, you actually do have eleven chumras that are between kodesh and truma. Sheish rishonos, the first six are bein lekodesh, bein lechulin shenas al taras kodesh, because item number six was the thing with the uh, with the with the t-shirt, and the chroinos. The last ones apply the Kodesh, Avaloy Lechulam, Shanasu, Altar Shakodesh. So, Dr. Gemara, my Ika, Bein Derova, Lidrab Ila. What is the halachat nafkamina between Rav Ila and Rav? Ika Benai. So, you, you're toiling one Kaili inside another Kaili. The Mishnah says it's not allowed. Why do I care if the, if the reason for it being prohibited is because of Chatzitza, or if the reason that it's prohibited because we're afraid I'm going to use a small mouth Kaili? 
So Kumar Sal Vigar Gusni, if you have a big basket, a Gusni, you actually just is a sal godol ma'id. It's a massive basket that's primarily used as a strainer. They put it over the bar that captures the water from the, the, the wine from the press. It's this massive basket, it's like a basket filter, and the, the, the wine filters through it before it goes into the bar. So if you have these two massive types of kalim, shemilan kalim, that you fill them up with smaller kalim, vitbilan and yitayola. Lamandam and shem chatzitza, if it's a chatzitza, ika, because there's still the weight of the kalim inside the basket, pressing down at the bottom of the basket. But lamandam and shem gzer shem yatvil machin pitzinoyrois, the chlish aim, the pib, the shesferis anoid, but the grubber who hold, that the only problem is, is that we're afraid I'm going to use a small mouth barrel, well, salve gerusni, she ain't the fiam kishres ferris anoid leka. There's no such thing as a basket or a, a large agergusni that doesn't have a big wide open mouth. So, therefore, if you use a regular keli, there we're afraid you won't make a distinction between a keli with a wide mouth and a keli with a small mouth. But if you're using a basket where there's no such thing as a basket with a small mouth, therefore, they might not be that kazeva. We have a huge nafkamina that, according to According to Rava, you have a huge kula that if you have a, a big basket, it's not a problem. The as the Rava lieutenant, and Rava is also going according to his shita. The Amar Rava, Rava said, Salviger Gusni, Shemilan Kalim Vit Bilam, Tahirin. As Salan Gusni that you filled with Kalim and you toil it, it will be tar. Well, mikveh Shachalku with Salviger Gusni. What if you had a mikveh that was exactly 40 saw? And you made a barrier inside it. You made a barrier inside it with this material. So the Allah is Sham Loy also loy tefillah. The tefillah there is not a good tefillah. Ah, you're going to tell me that it's not impenetrable. Water gets through it, right? It's not. It's not a, a, a watertight keli. Nevertheless, it doesn't have to be a watertight keli to be a separation. And the proof is in the pudding. All of the earth is really water permeable. So if that's the case, every little puddle should be considered connected to a mikvah somewhere because every little puddle is connected to a large body of water through the porous earth. Yet we say that, no, you need to have 40 salt right here. So therefore, therefore, a barrier that allows water through, but it's still a barrier, is considered a barrier and it would be splitting your mikveh into two smaller uh, bodies of water and therefore you wouldn't have 40 cells. I'm sorry? Right, right. They put another one. That's right. Because because it's two separate things, exactly. Behanamili This is all with a keli that's tar, meaning shulaihoya hakliachitin turk lahatva. So this is what I was speaking with Dr. Gerolda before. This that we say that you cannot type of one keli inside another keli, that's only if the other keli was tar and it didn't need to hire. It was just being used as a, a way to hold the keli that you're trying to type of. But if the keli, the outer keli is tame, since the outer keli is becoming toibled and we're being retired, all the keli inside it would also become tar from that same tefillah. And Rashi says, the inside of the keli is also becoming tahar. Through the water that goes into the inside of the keli. The same way it becomes tome, that's how it becomes tahar. So the tefila will also work for the kelim shebesoich. I believe this is talking according to Rav. If there's a chetitza, there might still be a problem. The time we learned, kelim shemilan kelim. If you took kalim and you filled them with other kalim, with bilan, and you toiled them that way altogether, they will be tahar. Rashi's latruma, v'loi chalak bein piv rachav piv kotzer. The brasha doesn't say that you need to make sure it's a big, if it's open wide or not open wide. Meaning, even if it's a narrow bottle, it will be a good fila. Vim loi tovah, if you didn't toivel, and we'll see that means if you didn't need to toivel the outer keli, because the outer keli was tar, then mayim hameuravin achium uravin kishosveres anoid. Then the opening has to be big enough kishosveres anoid. Otherwise, we don't consider what's inside the keli to become tar. Maika Omar, vim loy tovel. What does it mean if you didn't toivel the outer keli? You're putting it in the mikveh. 
Hachi Gamar, then Ainay Tsarach Lakbilo. If the outer Kelly was already Tahar and he didn't need Tvila, then you're only using it to put the other Kelly into the mikvah. Okay, I guess we could stop here. Um, we got a little bit into tomorrow's daf, which will be helpful to us anyway. Okay, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Did you intend to make the pun when you said it's a whole different story?